EKG Burst Part 5. During the course of an acute MI, when do large upright T waves usually occur? Large upright T waves are usually the first manifestation of acute MI, and they occur within minutes, and they last minutes to hours. ST segment elevation usually develops in minutes to hours, and Q-wave abnormalities usually develop in hours to days following acute MI. In summary, during acute MI, large upright T waves develop within minutes, ST segment elevation develops within minutes to hours, and Q-wave abnormalities develop within hours to days. During the evolution of an acute MI, as ST segment elevation decreases back to baseline, the T waves will often do this. As ST segment elevation resolves, T waves begin to invert. If you see isoelectric ST segments with deeply inverted T waves, you should be thinking subacute or recent MI. Note, however, that these changes can persist for weeks or even months. Persistence of ST segment elevation beyond four weeks should raise suspicion for this cardiac abnormality. It's structural. Ventricular aneurysm. If ST segment elevation does not resolve within a few days of an MI, you should start thinking about ventricular aneurysm and get an echo to help make your diagnosis. Posterior MIs can cause this R wave finding in leads V1 and V2. Posterior MIs can cause tall R waves in leads V1 and V2, and often V3 as well. Basically, they appear as a mirror image of an anteroseptal MI over the X axis. Does one normally get an R wave in V1? Yes, that is the septum being depolarized from left to right. Remember the septum is depolarized before the ventricles, so it appears early in the QRS complex. In posterior MI, the R waves in V1 to V3 appear much larger and wider. And why is that? Well, with posterior MIs, you lose posterior QRS forces, and that results in unopposed anterior QRS forces moving towards V1 and V2. Depolarization towards any lead will show up as a positive deflection, and here it manifests as a tall R wave. But essentially, this is the same mechanism that causes Q waves. But here, everything is a mirror image over the X axis, and that should also explain why the R wave is wide, just like a Q wave. And do posterior infarcts present with ST segment depression or elevation? Depression. Remember, posterior MIs are a mirror image of anteroseptal MIs, so expect to see ST depression and large inverted T waves in V1 through V3. Finally, you should also look for signs of ischemia in the inferior leads, since posterior and inferior MIs can often occur simultaneously, known as inferoposterior MIs. Define pathological Q waves. Typically, a Q wave is considered pathological if it is greater than 0.04 seconds in duration and greater than one millimeter below the baseline segment in two or more leads. Some consider them pathological if they are 25% or more of the height of the partner R wave or one third the size of the QRS complex. The definitions vary, but you should have a general sense of what defines a pathological Q wave. Name some underlying causes of inverted U-waves. Inverted U-waves can be due to ischemic heart disease is a common cause, often indicating left main or LAD disease. They also show up in myocardial infarctions, especially in leads with pathological Q-waves. They can also be seen during episodes of acute angina or during coronary artery spasms, i.e. Prince Metals angina? And what about non-ischemic reasons for inverted U-waves? Non-ischemic reasons for having inverted U-waves include left ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular hypertrophy, especially in leads with prominent R-waves, and then patients with long QT syndrome, 
can have inverted U waves. 